This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about whether Elon can, in fact, make the next Bitcoin. Everything he's saying he's going to do with Dogecoin. Now, by way of background, I think there are really two ways that people make their own money. And if you're not a YouTuber or you're not an influencer, you may not realize how dark this situation really is. I want to start by sharing a couple emails that I get these emails. I get many of these every day and they always read like this business proposal. Good day. We are the marketing firm of teslasafe.finance. It's a cryptocurrency. Most of these proposals that people can't spell, they can't use, they can't use uh, punctuation. And then of course they have a, a reason why their coin is better than everyone else's coin and certainly why it's better than Bitcoin. And of course the offer is they're going to give me a lot of this coin so I can pump it to my audience and then dump it on everyone. If you watch a lot of YouTube cryptocurrency videos, you should know that this is what is going on. And this is one of the basic um, economic drivers of YouTube channels. Here's another one. Uh, this is a cryptocurrency that's going to combat climate change by planting trees. And of course, we need a blockchain for that. And if I help them out, they're going to give me a lot of new coins that then I can, I can dump on newbies. Now, fortunately, I don't need the money. This is not the way that I, I want to make money. But if I chose to go this route, I could easily make more than a million dollars a year based on what I see in my inbox. It'd be a very immoral way to make this. But when you're buying that latest, greatest cryptocurrency out there that you just heard about from a YouTube influencer, you should be real, you should realize that even with, I only have 90,000 subscribers, I'm still a fairly small channel. But even at that size, I'm getting tons and tons of proposals like this every day. Needless to say, I'm not interested. Please don't send me any more if you're one of these scummy marketers. So that is basically the first way that coins are created. They're created as businesses to dump on naive retail investors. Then there's the other version of cryptocurrency where someone who's very rich and or uh, ambitious and or delusional decides that they already have their own airplanes and their own yachts and their own mansions, and now they want their own cryptocurrency. It's a little bit like uh, one of the Spice Girls back in the 90s saying that she wanted her own internet. And there's really a history of these kind of people, Roger Ver trying to uh, trying to hurt Bitcoin and start Bitcoin Cash, Mark Zuckerberg and Libra, which may still, a form of this is, looks like it's still going to happen, uh, Calvin Ayer and BSV, and now Elon Musk and Dogecoin. It's always the next Bitcoin, Bitcoin 2.0, how I can improve on it, etc. Now, in his tweet, he talks about how Dogecoin's going to be better because the block time, it's going to be faster by 10x. The block size is going to be 10x larger and the fees are going to be 100x smaller. And if you just do this, you will win hands down. I like Michael Saylor's uh, response here to the tweet. The world needs a decentralized, secure, deflationary store of value like Bitcoin much more than it needs a more centralized, less secure, inflationary medium of exchange that you describe above. This is, of course, a temptation to engineering types and people who already have a lot of influence and are rich to try to create their own coin. I, I don't think Musk is doing this for the uh, for financial reasons, but it's more of a, uh, a power grab. I, 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 I've seen a lot of good responses to Musk online, uh, basically saying, well, why don't you just, uh, let's make everything better. Make your Tesla batteries last 10x longer and, and recharge 10x faster, etc. And the point of these is to point out that there are engineering trade-offs and there are engineering challenges. And just coming into a space and saying, well, I'm going to make the next Tesla and I'm just going to make the cars faster and cheaper and charge more quickly, etc. This is not, uh, this is a fairly naive way of approaching uh, a new, a new area. Elon, please make your rockets 100 times uh, 10x faster and 100 times cheaper. And by the way, stop burning all those fuels, getting them into orbit because it's really bad for global warming. These are uh, obviously their trade-offs. Musk knows the environmental damage that's done by rockets and yet he still chooses to do it and I support him doing it because I agree we should become a multi-planetary species. But if I were to just come in and say, 
Elon, your rockets waste too much energy. You should stop doing them. This shows a real ignorance of how difficult it is to build a rocket and the trade-offs. We, we are trading some damage to the environment for the possibility of becoming a multi-planetary species. If you want really fast confirmation, you want really fast sending speeds for a cryptocurrency and very low fees, and you want instant confirmation, just use a SQL database. A, database. a centralized solution like Visa, for example, will always be much faster than a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. Of course, Visa does not offer a final settlement in 10 to 30 minutes like Bitcoin does. You can always reverse a Visa transaction. And Visa itself runs on the rails of the US dollar, which is secured by the US military and the US's uh, global power. And so it's, it's a little bit disingenuous to always to compare Bitcoin to Visa or PayPal or something, systems like this that are actually built on the Fed wire system, on the ACH system, and on the U.S. banking system, which itself is secured by war. That is what proof of work is for sovereign currencies. It is uh, you, you bomb people like Saddam who choose to drop the dollar and sell their oil for euros. Bitcoin uses a lot of energy and takes as much time to settle as it does because this is the only way to do it and make sure that the system is completely secure and completely decentralized. And I don't know about you, but I don't want the world's new currency or the world's new store of value, the world's new reserve asset to be controlled by oligarchs and corporations. Even someone like Musk, who's fairly forward thinking, he's still a single person. And this is, we don't want Caesar to make his own money. We want a, we want a, a new currency, a new store of value, a new reserve asset like gold, but digital gold, and we want it to be decentralized, open, and neutral. We don't need another oligarch making his own money. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I'd encourage you to hit that subscribe and like button, and uh, also share this video with a few friends, maybe if they're interested in Dogecoin. Safe, uh, Safe Adina Amus does a really good job in this tweet talking about how uh, Bitcoin uses a lot of energy because it has to do this to, so it doesn't rely on the authority of anyone. It isn't a more energy intensive way of doing consumer payments. It's a less energy intensive way of achieving consensus than war. And so of course you have to compare Bitcoin's energy usage to the energy usage of the current fiat financial system. SAFE points out that under the gold standard, it was the Bank of England that provided the global payment settlement platform and under fiat money since 1971, it's been the Federal Reserve. He points out, of course, that by printing the global trade token, the reserve asset, these countries had the exorbitant privilege of buying and invading the planet and footing it with the bill. Here's a great, uh, a great find from uh, Jason Yanowitz in which he finds an article from May of 1999 saying that the internets can be really bad for the environment because you're gonna to need to uh, buy, you're gonna to need to mine or, or dig up about a pound of coal to create package store and move two megabytes of data. Obviously the internet has become much more efficient. Since then, if people, if entrepreneurs and investors had listened to people, to uh, media outlets like Forbes, Forbes, they would never have built on the internet. This is what, this is real energy FUD as it, as it applies to the internet. A lot of people have been asking me what I mean by dead projects or failed projects, especially when it comes to Dogecoin. I think one way of approaching this is to look at the, the GitHub uh, depository and see the list of contributors over the past few years. This is Dogecoin. We can see that it really has been dead since uh, middle of 2017. That's when uh, a lot of developers stopped working on it. This is contributions to the master code excluding merge comets, commits, and bot accounts. We're seeing a little spike in 2021, but this is what a dead project looks like. And so when Musk says he's meeting with the Doge devs, it's, uh, it's a little bit puzzling. And a lot of people have done some nice memes which shows him meeting with a bunch of, a bunch of dogs. Litecoin, very similar, uh, a dead project development has almost ceased. And you compare this to Bitcoin, and we can see here with Bitcoin that the development has just 
continued and continued and continued. A lot of people believe that because Satoshi is, is absent or dead, that development on the Bitcoin core software has ceased. This couldn't be further from the truth. It's constantly being updated, but in a very conservative way that preserves the 21 million cap and preserves the security. If we take a look at the Dogecoin hash rate uh, chart, again, it's, it's fairly cyclical, like a lot of these altcoins, and it also takes place at a very low level, uh, just uh, 300, 400 terahashes. Compare that to Litecoin, which a lot of people have been asking me about, is also has this sort of these cycles where the hash rate goes up and goes down. If we compare that to Bitcoin, we can see that Bitcoin, this is the blue line, is really in its own category. And what you may not realize is I've also put Dogecoin and Litecoin on the same chart. You can't even see them because they are so low. If I, uh, if their hash rates are so low compared to Bitcoin, if I switch to a log chart, then we can see uh, Litecoin appears here, which is the orange coin, the orange line, and Dogecoin, which is the red coin. Bitcoin is more secure. It uses more energy, and it has a much higher hash rate, which makes it more secure than any of these other coins. Finally, on the topic of creating your own cryptocurrency, I think, uh, I think Jack at Twitter does a, a really nice job of summing it up, saying that it's very unlikely that you could ever create your own currency ever again. The conditions needed to create and sustain Bitcoin were very special and, uh, and unique. And to sort of flesh out what he means by that or what I think he means, he's talking about what I've called Bitcoin's immaculate conception in which Bitcoin appeared, uh, in which the, the founder, Satoshi Nakamoto, disappeared very early on. He never sold his coins, unlike Vitalik Buterin, of course, who's been dumping Ethereum and profiting from his own money that he printed, printed up. When you have a founder like Vitalik, you have a single point of failure. You can always kidnap him or governments can apply pressure or, uh, or really wealthy oligarchs can bribe him, etc. It's very different when the founder disappears. Another nice thing about Bitcoin's origins is that the early Bitcoiners were only in it for the math or the cypherpunk uh, ideology. They were not there to get rich. Most of these people did not get rich. And this way, it's very different from these sort of schemes that I showed you that come into my inbox where these people have really no interest in anything except printing up their own money and getting rich from it. They're not as smart as the cypherpunks and they're not as uh, financially pure, I would say. New coins are always a grab for power or wealth. This is what Elon is doing. He wants, he wants the power or the prestige. He obviously already has the wealth. And this is uh, what makes Bitcoin's origins and its origin story very unique. It grew up in a very organic way. It grew up slowly and under the radar. And I think Satoshi, this is one reason he designed the halvings and the four-year cycles, was to create this sort of boom and bust cycle where just when Bitcoin looked like it was taking over the world, it would crash and governments would forget about it. If it had grown too quickly, if the code had been slightly different and it had just gone parabolic and become a million dollars per coin really quickly, governments would have shut it down. It's just like marijuana. If five people in the whole world have pot plants in their basement or their yard, uh, it's fairly easy to shut them down. But when millions of people are growing pot all over the globe, millions of people are mining Bitcoin or running full nodes, it's too late. Bitcoin is like a virus. It's like a weed in the good senses of both of those that it grows, uh, it grows exponentially, but it has been growing under the radar. And now its roots are everywhere. It's too late to stop it. And there will always be people who want to create their own currency and think that they can do it better than Bitcoin. The problem is, in doing so, they give up the benefits of decentralization, and they will also uh, be subject to very strange, uh, strange incentives and perverse incentives because they are printing up their own money. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.